Hey everybody! Well, we just found out that we could have been deported from Mexico for running Pufferfish Villas. So we're going to tell you all about that and what we did to fix it on this week's episode. We're Douglas and Esperanza, and we decided to leave our lives in the U.S., sell almost everything we own, and move to Baja California Sur where we decided to start a resort in the magical town of Loreto, Mexico. Please come with us to follow our journey and live before you die. This week, we found out that we were working without what they call a work permit here and also our company was not set up correctly to be owned by foreigners and we have to take care of that and do a bunch of paperwork and you're gonna see that towards the end of the video but before we get started with that we've got some work to do we're starting a new project here at Pufferfish Villas I am down here at Pufferfish Villas I'm right in front of the lavenderia in fact I'm gonna paint lavenderia up above the door because I think that look cool we have this building we've been using it ever since we opened this is where all our laundry is there's a back room with all the pool equipment and a little bathroom in there and storage for all the stuff for the pool and to work around the landscaping here and up in here we have what we set up originally with our salvage cabinets so we have storage on this side and then we have a folding table on this side we use a folding table all the time. We definitely are keeping the folding table. It was a great addition to have this big folding table and it works fantastic. The cabinets are stuffed to the brim with stuff. And it's honestly just not enough storage. You know, these are all our linens, our towels, all this kind of stuff. And the problem is they're already full and we already have to store some of our extra stuff up in our garage up up above because we don't have room down here to store it when we have this is only with only two villas so once we get five villas we're gonna have three more well more than three sets because we're gonna have extra so we're gonna have five maybe five more sets of linens and towels and that's going to take up a lot of space so we are proactively working to build some more cabinets down here uh, we just don't have enough space with these the plan is to take this whole area here from the folding table all the way to the door and make it basically floor to ceiling cabinets well they're not going to go to the ceiling they're going to go to eight feet tall they're going to be three feet deep, which is about as deep as this counter and as deep as the door frame. So they're gonna be very deep cabinets and they're gonna be eight feet tall. Then we're gonna have storage bins on top of the cabinets for extra storage of stuff like Christmas decorations for the villas, which we do have some. Other stuff like that that you don't use very often. We'll store that up on top in bins. The, store, the cabinets will all have doors. Uh, that's important here because it is dusty and we do end up keeping this open most of the time and dust gets in here so if we don't have doors where all the linens and towels are stored they would end up getting dust on them and if they sit there for a while then they're going to get a lot of dust on them and they're going to have to be washed again so this will all be doored cabinets and it will cover up this window unfortunately we're going to lose that one window but there's no other way to do this so we'll close that off and probably put black plastic over it on the inside so from the outside it just looks dark we are starting on the lavenderia new cabinet project we're going to build some big huge cabinets in the lavenderia and i went and got some wood and now we're going to have to unload it Well, got one last use out of the tundra. I didn't think I was gonna use it again, but we decided 
since this project we wanted to get it done in the next month or so we wanted to get the wood here and it's a big pack of wood so we need a vehicle that can do it we didn't know how long till we're going to get in another vehicle so one last time for the tundra but worked out perfect now i got uh some standard two by fours down here they call this madera Amer or madera americana which means american wood meaning it came from the u.s and it's it's regular dimensioned lumber now most lumber down here is mexicano which mexicano is rough cut lumber that is not necessarily what any particular dimension you buy what you call a 4x4 but it's not 4x4 and it could be anything it could be an inch off in each direction when you get mexicano because it's very rough cut uh, no controls on the dimensions so this stuff is all brought from the U.S. This came from Oregon, where we're from. It uh, is hard to find good quality lumber here because they just bring back out down a pallet and then it sits here for a long time because Mexicans don't use framing lumber for anything. I don't think I've ever seen a Mexican in construction buy a piece of framing lumber for anything, at least Americano. They buy Mexicano framing lumber and they use it to form up concrete, but that's about it. It's really not used for anything else. Uh, I also got some birch plywood, got some three quarter sheets and some half sheets. Those are all for the cabinets. And uh, that this is used sparingly down here. Uh, again, Mexicans don't like to work with wood as far as anything construction wise. So even cabinets, in most Mexican houses, the cabinets are gonna be made out of concrete and they're gonna put a concrete countertop or a tile countertop usually. Uh, their, their bathroom counter uh, cabinets will be made, made out of concrete. Anything outside that they need to make, they're use, like a storage shed or any kind of structure outside, they're gonna build it out of concrete or they're gonna build it out of metal. You aren't gonna see anything built out of wood down here except crazy uh, uh, Americans like me that still like to build out of wood. I'm going to build the cabinets out of wood. You know, Mexicans think this is crazy. In fact, I had two different people at the store that I knew that were talking to me. They were waiting for their orders too. And they both said, what are you buying all this wood for? And I told them I was going to build some cabinets inside of our laundry room. And the one guy who was our actual blacksmith that did the cover up there at the Oasis he said, well, why don't you build them out of metal? We, we are supposed to build cabinets like that out of metal. And I said, I could, but I just am not super comfortable with welding that much, like fine welding, welding up uh, cabinets. And for me, this is probably comparable in cost. The wood might actually be a little more expensive than if I did it out of metal, but it's gonna be way easier for me to build these cabinets out of uh, wood instead of metal, and I'm not gonna be as frustrated. So I know the question's gonna be, what did this wood cost you down there in Mexico? And I will tell you right now, I'm gonna get my phone out and get the app out for the exchange rate today. The exchange rate has been pretty horrible. It's 1665 today. And it was 20 at one time, so 1665 is not a great uh, exchange rate. But let's see what this wood cost me, because I don't even really know. Okay, uh, the birch plywood is this receipt is difficult because the like the the subtotal the the price per and the subtotal are kind of like all squeezed together here with a comma between them. But here's what we're at. 595 per sheet. So at 595 per sheet, half inch birch plywood, which is good cabinet grade birch plywood, $35.71 a sheet for half inch birch plywood. Three quarter inch birch plywood, let me clear that, was 798 pesos a sheet. 
798 oops 798 pesos a sheet is 47.89 for three quarter inch birch plywood this is nice birch plywood too it's the same stuff you get from the u.s they import it from the u.s so it's a good quality plywood now some of the other plywood i've used like for the hidden bungalow was actually pine plywood some of that was actually made in mexico so it was not it was more like construction CDX plywood that you would have in the U.S. or or some of it was like ACX plywood that you would have in the U.S. Uh, but it was more outdoor grade sheathing kind of quality plywood. Not this stuff's more for making cabinets and furniture and things like that. All right. Got four pieces of three at uh, the one half and seven pieces of the three quarter. I'm going to use a three quarter for all the doors and shelves. And then the one half will be all of the exterior cladding or exterior of the cabinet box. And I got all the two by fours to frame up these cabinets and to put uh, reinforcement under all the shelves inside the cabinets for all the linens that's gonna go onto it. Two by fours, I got 30 two by fours and they are 125 a piece, which is seven dollars and fifty cents oh my gosh i can't believe that now i have no idea how these prices compare to the u.s let me know in the comments because i haven't been to the u.s and and looked at wood in two years so i don't i have no idea what wood costs in the u.s anymore at one time i could buy a two by four under a dollar in the u.s and uh i think that when i left they were still around two dollars maybe 250 a piece for two by four so 750 sounds expensive but i don't know they're number ones so well they're supposed to be number ones most of them are probably like really bad number threes but the rate graded is number ones and so uh let me know in the in the comments how that compares to home depot where you are okay the total of all that wood so four sheets a half inch four sheets of three quarter and 30 two by fours was 11,716 pesos 11,716 pesos seven hundred three dollars and seventeen cents and you want to know how good that is I estimated the cost of this project and I think I said seven hundred and four dollars that was before I went to the hardware store and I had no idea what this wood was gonna cost Let's go up and I'm gonna show you the plans. All right, back up here in the hidden bungalow and I'm gonna show you my plans for the Lavenderia project. Okay. So, by the way, I told you that I had estimated the cost before I left to tell Esperanza and here's my estimates of what this was gonna cost. And I said 40, 60, and five and these were like what were they there was like 25 50 and 750 730 dollars what i estimated and was 703 dollars so i i uh, did a pretty good estimation there good job babe yes all right here is my plans here's the plans for the cabinets the doors the shelves pieces and the face frame pieces so this is how I draw it all out on paper to so I can figure out how much materials I need and then I always do a cut sheet and that's because I'm trying to optimize plywood usage and not have a whole bunch of leftover scraps uh, so I just put out each sheet I just keep drawing sheets of plywood and then taking all the pieces that I've uh, figured out over here and putting them on the cut sheet of how to cut out the plywood to maximize usage and you can see that I'm only, I'm going to have like four long scraps and a couple more long scraps in this chunk all the rest of the plywood should be used so I'm not going to have too much waste from this project and the other thing is you want to keep your waste as big and as square as possible because those are pieces that you'll easily be able to use on other projects and so if you cut out weird shapes and you end up with this plywood that's weird chunky shapes it's really you know it's not very useful in other projects so that's something to think about when you're making your cut sheet up 
All right. We got the wood. We got the plan. We got everything here. So I guess I'm going to have to get to work. Now that we've got the project started, let me tell you about our problems here in Mexico that could have gotten us deported. So we went into the immigration office because Esperanza has a temporary residency and it's been the two years and we are converting that to a permanent residency status. Now I have permanent residency status I've had from the time that we got here. Esperanza wasn't able to qualify at that time so we went a route where she was temporary resident status for two years and then she could apply for permanent residency status and we did that and she got her resident card so that is awesome but while we were at the immigration office we found out that we didn't have all the appropriate paperwork filed that we needed to to run this business here in Mexico so this gets a little bit complicated. I'm not going to go into the gory details. I am planning on starting a Patreon channel soon. And I am going to produce a bunch of videos that are going to go in-depth into all the processes and everything you have to go through to move down to Mexico. From getting your residency to getting your CURP and your RFC and starting a corporation or a FEDICOMISO and buying property. But as far as this goes... We came, I have permanent residency status in Mexico, and permanent residency status allows you to work in Mexico. It basically gives you all the rights of a citizen except being able to vote and being able to run for some offices. And I don't think you can own a firearm in Mexico if you're not a citizen. But you can work in Mexico as a resident. Now, there's been posts going around on the Facebook channels that I watch and everything about do you need a work permit even if you are a permanent resident and there's a lot of misconceptions around that now if you are here on FMM you can't work uh, that is a just a tourist visa basically you're not allowed to work on that if you are here on a temporal a temporary residency that is a residency that expires in a certain amount of time then you can work but you have to get a separate work visa to work with a temporary residency when you have a permanent residency you can work and you do not need a work visa now this is a very very sticky situation because I'll have a bunch of people that are going to say that's totally false. You have to have a work permit to work it with a permanent residency. I was at the immigration office, INM, all yesterday afternoon, and I spoke to them in depth on this, so I have a pretty good understanding. Then I came back and went onto the Mexican government website and looked at all the laws regarding residency and all of the applicable laws for companies and I have a pretty good understanding of what happened. We had to get two different things. We had to get per personal what they call work permits at the INM office but we wouldn't call them work permits because they're technically not really work permits. So what we had to do is we had to notify immigration of our place of work and so the forms we had to file were a notification of change of place of work which is the same as starting work you have to do a change of a place of work when you start working in Mexico so this is where we didn't know we had to do this we had talked to countless people that said no you can just start a business do it if you're a permanent resident don't have to worry about it. You don't have to have a work permit in Mexico or anything. That is true, but you do have to register your place of work with immigration and they attach that to your residency file so that they have in the residency file the information of where you're working. If you change jobs or start a new company, you have to amend that and do a notice of change of place of work 
with the government of Mexico. So this is what we didn't have. And technically, per the law, we could have been deported for working without this notice. And we could have been banned from entry to Mexico for the next 10 years and lose our resident status. So this would have been catastrophic. Now, would that really have happened? Probably not. Immigration is fantastic here. They work with you and help you through every single process. I don't know about other places, but here in Loretto, they are so helpful. You do not need anyone else to help you. You know, I know there's other places that they have, there's legal consultants, there's attorneys and different people to help people with their residency and their immigration issues. But here in Loretto, the immigration staff speaks perfect English. They are very good and they are so willing to help you through the process that there's no need to, to get anyone else involved. So we filed the paperwork to do a notice of change, a place of work for myself and Esperanza. Now that she's permanent resident, she did also file this. So now we are both working for Pufferfish Villas. Well, it's actually our corporation, which isn't named Pufferfish Villas, but we're working for our corporation and it is all legal and recorded with INM. So we are safe now. Thank goodness. And we don't have to have any uh, concerns about being deported. And that would be horrible because we have this whole business going down here. So you have to get a license for a Mexican corporation to employ foreigners inside Mexico. And it doesn't matter that the corporation is owned by foreigners. That makes no difference. It's a Mexican corporation or sociedad. And that Mexican corporation can't hire foreigners to work in Mexico without a license, which we didn't know and we didn't have. So it's unfortunate that we didn't know about this before. You know, we have a full-time accountant. We have attorney here and no one had ever mentioned this to us. So I don't know if it just fell through the cracks or not, but we do everything by the book. So we went in, we registered our corporation to employ foreign workers. So now we are completely legal. And trust me, we were there for like three and a half, four hours yesterday at the immigration office. And we some of that time was doing uh, Esperanza's residency, but not very much. Most of it was working on this other stuff uh, for the corporation and for our changes of employment. So now everything is legit. It is all set up correctly and we have all the paperwork filed. I have a license for the corporation to employ foreigners, <laughs> us, <laughs> even though the foreigners own the corporation. But uh, I have to have a license to employ ourselves basically to work here. And we are registered to work for the corporation here. So luckily this didn't turn out bad and things went bad and and we ended up getting deported they were fantastic like i said working with us and we got the whole thing squared away so don't worry we're not going anywhere pufferfish bills is gonna be here for a very long time all right thanks everybody for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and hopefully you learned something if you haven't subscribed do that now so you get notified when we put out new videos every Friday or Saturday now, not Friday, and hit that like button so we can get pushed out to even more people and get them good information about living and traveling in Mexico. Thanks again for watching and never forget to live before you die.